Hello, this is Bruno Luce with GLB Productions. Thanks for joining me. In this video, we're going to look at how to use a one knob compressor. So let's begin. All right, now before we begin the video, let me just give you a very quick overview of what we have here. We have our MG124CX mixing console over here. We have an Audio-Technica AE5100 plugged into channel 4, and that's the mic that I'm speaking to you through now. It's up here, and that's just to pick up my voice. On channel 2, we have an SM57. I know the label says 58. That's from a previous video. And inserted on channel 2 is channel 3 of the DBX1046. Oh, and of course, the output of the mixer is connected to the video camera. Automatic gain control on the mixer is disabled so that the dynamics that you hear are as a result of our setup. Okay, so let's begin by looking at the controls on a typical hardware compressor, which you can see here. So this is channel 3 of the DBX1046, and as you can see, it has four knobs on the front. It has a threshold, a ratio, an input gain, and finally, it has a limiter. Now, the limiter is not found on all compressors, so we'll just keep that off for this demonstration. The important thing to understanding compression is to understand the concepts of threshold and ratio. And in order to do that, I have a little diagram here. You have level on this axis and time on this axis. You have a signal that increases in a linear fashion with respect to level and time. Now, when we talk about compression threshold, it refers to the point in dB at which the compression begins or kicks in. The ratio refers to the ratio of the input to the output signals once the input signal crosses the threshold. So, a ratio of 1 is to 1 is the same as no compression. A ratio of 2 is to 1 means that for every 2 dB that the input signal exceeds the threshold, the output signal will only increase by 1 dB. So for every 6 dB increase in the input over the threshold, you'll get a 3 dB increase in the output. A 4 is to 1 ratio is double 2 is to 1 and means that for every 4 dB over the threshold that the input signal goes, your output signal will only increase by 1 dB. So 2 is to 1, typical studio compression. 4 is to 1 is what you might use in a live setting for certain uses. And this diagram shows you graphically how the signal is affected. Okay. So now that we understand how it works in theory, let's have a look at how it works in practice. As you can see on the front panel, we have our threshold marked in dB and we have our ratio. So to begin with, I'm going to set this to 2 is to 1. And the output gain, also referred to as makeup gain, this refers to gain that it is that is applied after the compression. But let's just get some compression happening first. So I'm going to pick up this SM57, which is connected to channel 2 of the mixer. Check, check, 1, 2. Okay, now, to begin with, I'm going to set my threshold very high. I'm going to set it at 0 dB. So as you can see there, we currently have no compression, all right? So, in other words, the input signal has not yet gone over the threshold. As I bring my threshold down, you can see that I begin to have gain reduction. In other words, compression is happening, and you'll hear this on the video. As I continue to go down, you can see that I get more and more compression there, okay? And this is reducing the loudest peaks of my voice now. All right, now I'm going to give you an illustration of what happens during compression using my hands. Now, if you look at this, 
if you assume that my right hand represents the bottom of the dynamic range, in other words, this is the softest signals, and my left hand represents the top of the dynamic range. These are the loudest signals. When compression kicks in, what happens is that the loudest signals are reduced, right? The loudest signals are reduced. A lot of people think that compressors make louder signals softer and softer signals louder. That is not strictly true, okay? So what we have done is we have reduced the loudest signals. That's the gain reduction that you can see on the meter. Then what we do is we can turn the whole signal up, thereby increasing the average level of the signal, okay? That process is done either at the fader or at the output gain or makeup gain button on the compressor. So let's repeat the process. We have two is to one, no compression. Bring the threshold down until you can see there we have quite a bit of compression happening and you can hear that my voice is getting softer. What I'm now going to do is I am going to increase the output gain to bring up the average level, okay? So you can now see that if I use this switch here to compare, our input and our output signals are now about 0 dB. Without this, the input signal is about 0, but the output is only minus 12 because of the compression. So we need to increase this in order to give us the same input and output signals. This is why people think that compression makes louder signals softer and softer signals louder. It's actually a two-stage process. The compression is the gain reduction. The makeup or output gain then raises the average level and that now, with a one-knob compressor, you have only a single control. You don't have separate threshold and ratio controls. So it's important to read the owner's manual to see what those are. Now, on this particular mixer, they've been real helpful and printed them over here. With the control fully counterclockwise, like it is now, the gain is zero, and the threshold is plus 20. Now there's no mention of ratio. I looked it up in the owner's manual. The ratio goes from one is to one to four is to one. You have no control over that. With the control fully clockwise, you have nine dB of gain and the threshold is at minus five dBU. So what that means is, is that the one knob compressor combines the functions of ratio, threshold, and output gain. As you turn this knob clockwise, what you're doing is you're simultaneously lowering the threshold, increasing the ratio, and increasing the output gain. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna change over my dynamic microphone. Check, check, one, two. Here we are on the dynamic microphone speaking to you on channel two. And right now, what we've got is, we've got the one knob compressor turned fully off. As I turn the knob clockwise, you'll hear that the average level goes up. And the second thing is you'll hear that the peaks are knocked back. So, check one, two, check, check, one, two, three, four, Check one, two, so that's at 12 o'clock. Check one, two, three, four. Now, notice that on the meters, the meters are showing a higher average level, okay? Once again, all the way off, we're at about minus three. At three o'clock, we're now at about plus three. Check, check, one, two, check, one, two, check, check, one, two. So you can hear that's maximum compression. And as you can hear, what's happened is the average level of my voice has gone up quite a bit. Let's now try that on the condenser microphone. 
no compression. Check, check, one, two, three, four. Check, one, two, going up. Check, check, one, two, one, two, one, two. Check, one, two, one, two, one, two. Check, one, two. So the final question is, how do you set a one knob compressor? You've got no output or input metering on the compressor itself. So what that means is that you've got no way of knowing how much gain reduction you have. All you have are the meters on the console to guide you. And when you have a whole band playing, it's almost impossible to tell how much compression each channel is getting. So my advice to you is set it using your ears. When you're setting up the channel, try and experiment with different settings. Try the knob at 10 o'clock, 12, 2, 3, and see what sounds best. Remember also that as you turn the knob clockwise, you are effectively raising the game. So if you go too far, you can clip the channel or you can get feedback. Beyond that, you need to use your ears and your experience to set these things. I generally start with them at 12 o'clock and I'll adjust from there. So that was how you use a one knob compressor. I hope that it's helped your understanding of this particular piece of equipment as well as compression in general. If you have any questions or comments, do please leave them in the comment section below. I always love hearing from you, my viewers and subscribers. Until the next video, this is Bruno Luce with GLB Productions. Take care and God bless you. Goodbye.